morning, everyone. Once again, thank you for joining us on this historic day for the Houston Dash. We'll get started here shortly with opening remarks. From there, we'll take questions from folks in the audience, and then we'll wrap up with, every, uh, with a few folks here that we have on Zoom. So with that, I'll turn it over to the majority owner and chairman of the club, Ted Siegel. Thank you, Edgar. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I'd like to wish everybody a, a happy holidays and pleased to be back here uh, ending the year on a, on a very high note uh, with the introduction of uh, Sam. Um, we're, we're very excited about uh, today's announcement, and uh, I'll get into more detail about uh, Sam in a moment. Um, but before I do that, uh, I'd like to Take a moment to recognize our DASH executive staff in getting us uh, to this point. Uh, President Jessica O'Neill, and in particular, uh, General Manager Alex Singer. Um, Alex led an exhaustive, comprehensive search, applying her unique set of experiences as a former player, uh, as a sports business executive, and now as general manager, considering and vetting uh, an array of candidates, a, a really long uh, list and group. Um, that led us to the conclusion that Sam is the best person to lead the Dash in this new era. Now on Sam. Um, there isn't a more experienced, successful, qualified coach than Sam. Sam methodically progressed through the coaching ranks, uh, through the youth ranks, and then for the last 10 seasons uh, in Seattle. Uh, he's been an assistant on a perennial uh, championship contender on a team that has won three NWSL Shields and uh, was a two-time uh, championship finalist uh, during his tenure. Um, Sam is noted for both his uh, technical and tactical experience and something that we're going to lean on him uh, as the new coach of the Dash. And Sam has coached some of the most notable players uh, in the game, uh, people like uh, Megan Rapino and Rose Lavelle. Um, but at the same time, he's been an integral figure uh, in the development of many other players. Um, so as, as we uh, talked about uh, this possibility and the feedback that I heard from Alex uh, as, as she was uh, continuing to vet Sam, um, this is an opportunity that is long overdue for Sam. Uh, he's had opportunities in the past for head coaching positions but was uh, waiting for the right fit. And fortunately for us in Houston, uh, here we are today. Um, and and uh, to, from several people, we heard uh, that sadly this is uh, O.L. Reign's loss, but uh, we in Houston are the beneficiaries. So I'm very pleased uh, to welcome Sam and uh, uh, looking forward to the season ahead. So welcome, Sam. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for that. We'll continue with Alex. Thank you, Ted. And good morning, everybody. Um, I'm very, very excited to officially introduce our new head coach of the Houston Dash, Sam Leedy. Um, this day marks a moment and opening a new chapter for this club, uh, one, as Ted mentioned, uh, that took a process, a very, very thorough process that I was dedicated to in finding the, the right fit for our club, for this team, for our players, for the future of this organization. It's, it's no secret that 2022 was a year uh, and a season full of both change and evolution for this club, both on and off the field. Under the leadership of, of Ted and of Jess O'Neill, the Dash made strides on and off the field. Coaching changes, an evolving league uh, in very interesting circumstances. This group stuck together through thick and thin and together made history on the field. We, we create an identity together. The, pl the players created an identity with different coaches, with different leadership. They were able to maintain this. And through that, we achieved tremendous results. The players of this team and our roster is not only resilient, but brave. Important to me through this process was to understand exactly what was needed to not only meet those performances that we had last year, but to surpass them and look forward to a championship. With that in mind, it was important to find somebody who I thought would genuinely be able to connect with this group and bring out the best in them. Looking forward, giving the players stability and structure, knowing they had been through so many changes was also a priority. Finding someone who spoke the same language as we do as a club, what our identity is, who our what our values are, 
and looking ahead with our ambition in mind, tactically, culturally. Ultimately, what we needed is, and what we need is a foundational structure and a deep-rooted passion for success. This is where Sam comes in. Sam not only brings a wealth of knowledge and experience from his time in this league, 10 seasons, he has seen this league from the very beginning, the ups, the downs, the good, the bad, and the ugly. He has both the technical and tactical experience to lead the style of play that we want to see here in Houston and lead the tremendously talented group of women to a championship. Even more importantly, as Ted pointed out, was, was our work and our homework through our, our due diligence that we did and what I learned about Sam along the way. Beyond his talent as a coach was the validation from so many people, influential people in this league and across this sport. Yes, Sam has seen the league evolve through the years, but he knows the nuances of the league as well and those that this league come, come along with. He has experienced firsthand the failures and successes, but he's also observed what it takes to be successful, what is necessary to win in different circumstances, different environments, different atmospheres, different markets in this league, and in every situation you can find yourself in. And in this league, that can mean a lot of different things. With our goal of winning a championship, all of these things were invaluable and the things that I learned about Sam along the way. But as I said, I was also able to learn about Sam as a person, a well, well-respected coach that players and colleagues and very influential people across our league and sport spoke so highly about with glowing recommendation. The head coach is obviously a very prominent role, and this was a monumental decision for this club, given the changes that have taken place, not only here, but through our league this year. There were a lot of different considerations, um, and again, this was a decision that was supported by the extensive work we did as a group behind the scenes to ensure that we are hiring the best possible individual for this position. Sam not only brings his soccer pedigree, but respect and support from everybody around this league. Not only that, Sam does have championship experience, something we definitely need as part of our group if it's something we aspire to. He spent 10 seasons in Seattle and served under three very prominent head coaches, different coaches as well. He has proven he's adaptable to change, he's consistent, and most of all, reliable. For me, that's huge. In terms of successes, Sam has helped the rain reach the postseason six times, uh, winning the Shield three times, as Ted mentioned. Thinking holistically about our club, uh, and not only how success is created, but how culture and identity is built and also sustained, we want a coach who brings out the best, not only in the players that we have, but also in his staff and the development of our staff here. This means both for the immediate future of this club in the 2023 season, but also for the years to come. We're laying down the foundation together, day one, starting together, um, not only to bring out the best to Houston, but to cultivate that here ourselves within this group. And Sam it will be a huge part of that moving forward. His experience in coaching education proves that he's continuing not only to develop himself, but that of other coaches. And as I mentioned, that's what we want to do. Bring the best here, but also cultivate that here with our own talent. With all of that in mind, I am elated to officially welcome Sam Lady to the dash. And please join me in a warm welcome for our new head coach, Sam Lady. Oh, thank you very much. Um, it's the first time I've felt this tall in a very, very long time. So. Uh, I uh, appreciate you guys setting this up for me. Um, I'm going to start with uh, a couple of thank yous. And at, at first, it goes back to my former club, O.O. Rain. Um, without a shadow of a doubt, there is no way I would be sat in this privileged position I am today were it not for the, for the trust and to su support and relationships of, of Bill and Teresa Predmore, who were the original founders of Seattle Rain, and uh, especially Laura Harvey. Um, as Alex said and Ted said, I, I've been in the league for, for 10 seasons with with that club um, and obviously the, the changing of the brand to Oa Rain. Um, so first thing I have to do is acknowledge their 
um, their support and their guidance in, in, in getting me to the position where I am today. Um, so thank you very much for, to Bill, Teresa Predmore and everybody at Owerang. And that even extends to, to the players as well. There's, uh, I've worked with so many world-class players mm -hmm. that, as Ted had mentioned, and without a shadow of a doubt, there's been massive learning opportunities for, for me as well. So thanks to everybody really at Owerang, um, whether it was a staff member, whether it was a player, or if, you know, especially, especially the fans. So um, kudos and thank you very much to them. Um, secondly, Alex, Jessica, Ted, thank you very much for, for this opportunity. Um, I'm humbled, grateful, um, but not satisfied. Um, one, of the, one of the reasons why I'm sat here today is I'm ambitious um, and I want to win. And I think that most relationships in life, in life that are successful are the ones that involve compatibility. And what was very, very clear from day one in my initial conversations with Alex and then later with Jessica and Ted was that we had our values were aligned. And that was really, really important, important for me. Um, you know, as it's been noted a number of times, having been in a club like Seattle and, and where success was expected, and that was winning championships, which we weren't, uh, they weren't, I'm going to have to change my terminology there, they were not successful in achieving, but making the postseason on those occasions and, and unfortunately losing the, the final number of occasions. Um, it's putting me in a great position to, to, to see what has worked and, and what hasn't worked. Um, and for me to have left that organization where the demands and the expectations are that we win today uh, and win tomorrow, um, it is very, very, very um, beneficial for me to, to be here and, uh, and experience this challenge with the, with the Houston Dash. Thank you for that. We'll start with questions now. We'll begin here with, with Mark Berman. If you guys have questions, please, use, or please raise your hand. We'll go to Jason next. Go ahead. No, go ahead. A couple of questions. First of all, Sam, what... How would you define a Mark Berman performance? How would you define what this day like? Is, what this day is like for you? What this day is like for me? Yes. Um, a bit overwhelming, actually. Yeah, I'm used to being. I've been ten years in as, as an assistant, and you know, a short period of time as an interim head coach. So I, sp I spend most of the time behind the screen and behind the curtain. So um, not overwhelming, but um, fascinating, uh, exciting. It's really been a dynamic couple of days that for myself and my family and. Uh, you know, obviously we've been in discussions now for, for, for a number of weeks and it really, really hit home on Sunday when we were packing our bags that, you know what, this, this is actually happening. So that was, a, that was definitely take a deep breath moment. Um, and obviously when, you, when you've been, I've lived in Seattle for, for 22 years now, this was a, and it, my next step was always going to be very, very big. So the next step for me had to be the right step. And I think the, uh, the relationship and the, the connection that we have already um, is, 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 is proven that I'm, I'm in the right place and that waiting for a position like this and not jumping into a position because I wanted to be a head coach, having that patience is, is, is serving well. So, um, yeah, I'm ecstatic. I'm, I'm very, very excited. If we could start training tomorrow, I would, uh, I would do that, but that's against... Uh, it's not the right thing to do, but uh, I'd like to do that. That's yeah. against the rules. <laughs> It, it's it's a very important moment. Um, I, I, I think it's uh, the next step in the progression that we've been making as an organization. Mark, uh, as you and others are well aware, um, I, I think uh, we as new ownership are devoting the resources that the Dash deserve. And that started earlier this year with the hiring of Jess as president, uh, bringing on uh, Alex as, as general manager. And, and this is sort of the culmination of... Uh, of the series of hires that, that we needed to make and that are going to uh, elevate this club uh, to, to greater heights uh, in the years ahead. Jason. Uh, Jason Bristol from KHOU. I think this one is probably more for Alex. Um, the players in this league now have a greater voice on so many fronts than they ever had. Did you lean on any of the players during this process of, of finding a new, a new head coach? Uh, yes. Um, so, I mean, we had extensive uh, – exit meetings at the at the end of the season of course and what was important for me it was to to gather as much information as possible about what what we needed in our next in our next head coach and we also had a list of non-negotiables and priorities from from our players that were really the drivers and in, in how I navigated my discussions with initial candidates and the, those initial conversations um, 
I did have discussions with with various players throughout the process as well, but it was important, I think, collectively first to start with a plan, and that started with with the feedback I had, kind of kn knowing exactly where where to start and how how to navigate, like I said, and then those priorities and non negotiables. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, that, that's a really good question, and actually, part of the conversation I had with uh, I had a Zoom yesterday with the players. One of the first things that I brought up on the on the call was the the whatever you did as as a team, as a group of players, from a cultural perspective, from a leadership perspective, from a spirit perspective. Whatever you did last year, having gone through the experience of three head coaches, that's our starting block for twenty twenty three. Um, you know, it's, I'm not a magician. Two arms, two legs. I'm not going to come in with some with some magic dust, right? So for me, really, really tying that into the the foundation for for 2023 and then future success. And that, and in fact, in our early conversations before before I'd actually officially had my first interview, I'd, I'd spoken to a number of players around the Dash organization, a number of people that have played here, and, and players that some people were starters, some people were on the bench, some people were not making the squad, and. What was a very unique moment for me was not one member of that playing or, or technical staff had anything poor to say about the club. Nothing, except for the weather in July and August, <laughs> full, full disclosure. Um, but I, that for me, having been in the league for so long, and it's a very small league, right? There, you, there, there are no secrets in the league. Um, for me to hear that, that th th you know, th over four or five different players in different sort of hierarchical circumstances. For them to all say only positive things about the club and the culture and the leadership, that was a that was a massive, massive tick for me because you know, you uh, you need that, right? You you have to have that. You have to have that that spirit in in the locker room. You have to have that culture in the locker room. Um, and my job is to to come in and, and, and evolve that. Not it more of an evolution as opposed to revolution. It would be silly of me to come in and and, and break that down because I've got an ego and I'm a new head coach and I want to show everyone what I can do. So I'm going to be leaning on the players a lot. I'll be leaning upon the, the staff and the leadership a lot um, and, and collaborating and trying to continue the, the positive things about the culture and add different layers to it. And, and I think part of that is a, a winning mentality, especially at home. It's a great question. Thank you. We'll go to Sam here in the back. Welcome to Houston. Um, Sam, my name is Sam too. All oh, right, very so good. That's right, easy, easy to remember. <laughs> Africa Sports Network. Yes, I'm obviously taking this team and saying that I have a national team player playing here, Michelle Alonso. My question is this. Um, you spent almost a decade, over a decade with uh, Gloria Reign. Yeah. How easy or difficult was it for you to make the decision to switch from there? Because here you like a family, a house. Yeah, yeah. To come to Houston. Massive, Sam. Huge. Yeah, and I, 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 I touched on this just now. A any... any the next step in my personal journey, the next step in my my professional development, had to be the right one. Um, there had been a, a sort of touch of other opportunities in the past, but just didn't feel right. Whether it was leadership, whether it was squad, whether it was culture of the, of the club, whether it was the ambition. Um, so really, really challenging, yeah. And, and again, I think I'd say just now, it didn't really hit me and us until uh, until we started packing our bag to come down for this trip. It's like, yeah, this wow, this is really happening, yeah. Um, I like that one. During the week last season, the Dash got a better part of the rain. Uh, I believe we are you know, in the dugout. When that happens, is that uh, factor into you coming to this team that you know, got a better part of the rain? Yeah, and, uh, another good question. So, I, you know, typically you experience the opponent as an opponent, right? You go there with a desire to win and, 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 try and, and, uh, and try and beat them, right? Try and get one up on them. I came down with the rest of the OA staff for the, the quarterfinal game. Um, against Kansas City, and, and I got a chance to see that as a different lens. Um, so seeing the packed stadium, seeing the kids, the families, the mums, the dads, brothers, sisters, grandpas, everybody in dash gear, that was a surprise, to be quite honest here, and, and need to keep that up for 2023, by the way. Um, that was a huge surprise. So to, to, to see and experience a club from the lens as, as a fan at that point, because I was a fan at that point, um, 
was gave me a really, really unique opportunity. And I will say this as well. And, and um, how we were treated, you know, so how we were treated by the club coming down as, as a rival team to, to scout the game that we would play against one of the, the, you know, the team that was successful. How we were treated, how we were greeted at the stadium, how we were moved through the stadium to, the, to our location in the stadium uh, to, to watch the game. That really stood out to me. That was, an, that was another tick in the box. Um, you know, John Wooden once said, little things make big things happen, right? And that was something that really, really, really stood out for me. So a number of, a number of, layer, a number of layers that start pointing me down south to a much, much warmer climate than I am in at the moment. Although not at the moment, obviously. Um, yeah, so to answer your question uh, bluntly, it was very, very challenging. It was very exciting. And uh, yeah, can't wait to get going. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I think we'll wrap up here with Grant. Go ahead. Hi, Grant from Keeper Notes. Sam, I was wondering if you could talk about how the game has changed in the 10 years that you've been in the league. How long do we have? <laughs> <laughs> to, well, professionalism. Number one, ownership that, you know, I, and we were having this conversation um, with Alex last night. Um, in fact, actually, it was, it was with Ted, apologies, um, about OL Rain and, and, how, and Seattle Rain, how we ended up with, with the players that we had there. And the, the, initially, the first part was that we were a destination club, not because we were winning, but we were a destination club because how we treated players. And that I, there was a positive culture around the league and obviously in the, the sort of inception of the of the NWSO in 2013 um, the standards sort of I wouldn't say for every club but league wide were, were, were pretty poor and the players were put through some uh, were exposed to some pretty pretty poor resources um, and poor standards so um, and I, so so for the for the rain I think we always recognized this as a club that looked to do the right things for the players even if it was something as simple as you know, providing lunches, right, and, and taking care a little bit more when it comes to things like travel. Um, so, um, th them becoming a destination club just because of the way that they've treated players is, is, is sort of sad, really, um, to think that they stood out because of that. I think, obviously, of course, the, the, the quality of life and the lifestyle there was different. Laura Harvey, I think, was a, was a, is, and still continues to be a, a big draw for, for players, and rightly so. Um, so, I've seen the professionalism improved dramatically and we've obviously seen resources improve um, I think we've seen the, the standard improve and obviously through expansion now we've got you know four more teams than we had in uh, you know uh, in 2013 and I think that's very positive and two more teams joining in 23 or 24 Four. in 24 um, and then just the exposure as well the exposure for the exposure for the league it's it's so pleasing for me to um, to see now that players are recognized for who they are as human beings but also the value that they bring to the sport and, the, and, and they, they bring to the communities you know players that have been in the league for for 10 years you know for our reign it was you know fishlocks the rapinos the lauren barneses um there are plenty of, there are plenty of others around, around the league and so it's really pleasing to see the evolution of the of the league so that you know players can spend time and dedicate their life to to their craft and to a sport that they love to play um because it wasn't always possible uh, back then. Um, obviously, the next change is VAR next season, so let's see how that goes. Um, but it's been a positive evolution, for sure. Um, I think this, the league is, is perhaps is stronger than people think it is. Um, yeah, so it's, it's been an evolution, yeah. And I'll tell you this, my hair wasn't grey when I started in 2013. <laughs> so you can blame that on the NWSL. Yeah. Uh, one one follow-up. Uh, Looking at your deeper experience in Seattle and kind of the soccer community in Seattle for, it sounds like, 20 years. Yeah. Uh, have you started to talk about that wider community in Houston? Um, no, actually, not yet. No, it's, I mean, yeah, I, I think in the, in the past 48 hours, I think I've met about 150 people. I, remem I remembered about six names, which is, which, is, which is a positive for me. Um, but there have been so many, I mean, th this trip has really been designated towards this event, the media yesterday, the you know the photo shoot yesterday, um, and then and then here today. So uh, and then um, you know more sort of business stuff, but not not really. Uh, we haven't really got into the weeds in terms of that stuff. But that I know how important that is to to a club. I know how important that is to the community and having a connection between the club and the community. Um, one of the things I, pro I probably enjoyed the most about my opportunity for 
one of the things I, I perhaps enjoyed the most about my position as a, an assistant was that you know we could we could do special things for for younger players and, and bring them out to training. We can we can surprise them now and again with a jersey and things like that because those are the, creating that connection with the with the fan base, whether whether it's young or old, is is really really important and uh, hoping something that we can all look to improve on in in Houston. Yeah. Good way to close there. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're going to do a quick photo, and then everyone on the stage will be available for one-offs here shortly. Thanks again. You guys know more about me than myself. Jesus, you, are you guys good in the back? Perfect. Rich, Jason, good? Perfect. Yep. Okay.